the movement in the direction of becoming is really the problem because it is that that creates and tells you that this is me and I want to be something like that. It doesn't matter whether you want to be a billionaire, which you consider is a materialistic goal, or to be an enlightened man or a god man or whatever is your particular fancy. Both are exactly the same. The society, culture may consider one superior to the other, but basically and essentially, both the movements in the direction of becoming something other than what you are is the one that is creating all the problems. The, the, the culture, the society, or whatever you want to call it, you see, uh, I want to use the word for want of a more adequate uh, expression, the world mind. You see, the world mind means the totality of man's experiences, thoughts, and feelings. And we are, that is passed on from generation to generation. And I maintain, I have no way I can, you see, make this definitive statement that it is also transmitted from generation to generation through the genes. But the world mind I am talking about has created you and me hmm, for the sole purpose and main purpose of maintaining its status quo. That's all it is interested in. So without the use of that knowledge, the world mind, you have no way of experiencing your separateness from that and the very fact that you are alive is also cannot be experienced without the help of that. Your existence as you know yourself, as you experience yourself, is possible only through the help of that. Just the way I have to feed myself to have energy to, to keep this physical body going, you have to use that, the word mind, to maintain your continuity as, you see, a separate entity. Exactly. I don't have any thought which I can call my own. Well, see, for me, so since I don't have any thoughts which I can call my own, I don't have any experiences which I can call my own. I'm um, just, you see, a tape recorder, whatever is put in there comes out. It's a computer. You see, the problems you want to discuss. Huh? The, you have the solutions. There is, I don't see any problem there. What is the problem I am asking you? The, I don't see any problem there. And you have solutions, and no time you are ready to accept the hard reality that they are not the solutions for the problem. So you are going here, there, and everywhere, finding out, you see, whether there is anybody who can offer me another solution. So in exactly the same way, you see, you want another answer for your question. Why you are not satisfied with all the answers you have? Why you are still asking the questions? You have the answer, so I don't want... You see, to participate in this question and answer ritual. You see. So you're saying I have no answers at all. From an early age, UG was obsessed by two questions. What is enlightenment and how can I achieve it? After having tried in all possible ways to get an answer to his questions, at the age of 49, he suddenly understood that it was his searching for an answer that kept him from reaching his goal. In this period of his life, he went through a physical transformation that brought about a radical change in his consciousness. It was then that he, as he calls it himself, entered into the natural state. In one of his books, U.G. describes the natural state in the following way. This state is a state of not knowing. You really don't know what you are looking at. I may look at the clock on the wall for half an hour. Still, I do not read the time. I don't know it is a clock. All there is inside is wonderment. What is this that I am looking at? not that the question actually phrases itself like that in words. The whole of my being is like a single big question mark. It is a state of wonder, of wondering, because I just do not know what I am looking at. The knowledge about it, all that I have learned, is held in the background unless there is a demand. 
If you ask the time, I will say, it's a quarter past three, or whatever. It comes quickly, like an arrow. Then I am back in the state of not knowing, of wonder. And surprisingly, see, I find that more and more people in the West are getting interested in this kind of a thing. That's why they are importing all kinds of things from India, from Japan, from everywhere, because you have everything that you can reasonably ask for. You see, I always maintain and uh, insist on repeating time and again that what has not helped those countries like India and other Asiatic countries is not going to help anybody in the world. You see, meditation is one of the worst techniques that people are preaching. You see, if it were not for the fact that Ashoka, one of the great emperors of yeah, India, the, the guy who used it pillars, as yeah. an instrument of power, both Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism have become the instruments of power. This is what I tell very often to so the So they be ha have become the banner for worldly powers, yeah. but claiming they, they were yes, a spiritual movement. Exactly. Movies. At that time, the religious uh, okay. uh, but, well, thing well, was the only a... instrument we had. Now you have political ideologies. Why you killed so many hundreds and thousands of people? Uh, and cows. Preaching, you know, preaching, love thy neighbor as thyself. How many men, women and children have been killed? And all the political ideologies you enforce on the world only through the instrument of power and violence. Even so I told can we Gandhi, do something about it? even when I met Gandhi, I yeah. told him, more people have been killed in the name of non-violence than violence. He himself admitted when his movements ended up in violence and killing of so many mm. men, women and children. You see, he admitted and announced to the wide world that he committed a Himalayan blunder. But a few months after, he started another organization, another movement, and killed so many people. When I pointed out that uh, he didn't quite understand what I meant when I said both violence and non-violence spring from the same source. Of course, Indians had no weapons to fight the British Empire at that time. So that was the instrument of a, uh, an impotent man who had no power to challenge the power that was entrenched there. So you say that comes from the, ba the same basic instinct, which is like the, the, the lust for influence. Yes, influence. So why bother hanging around me? You are not going to get anything because there is nothing to get. Nothing to get. Nothing to change. I see the green. You see I nothing. I you can't listen. You don't talk all that nonsense to me. You see nothing there. You don't even see this. This will finish you. And I see the you see nothing. You are empty words. You are repeating, memorized, empty phrases and words, sir. That's all that you are doing. Whatever is put in like a tape recorder, you are repeating everything that is there. Put in there. That's all. You see, see that. How can you see? You have never seen anything in your life, I tell you, never. But one thing I can say with certainty is that the very thing that I searched all my life was shattered to pieces and I said to myself, the self-realization, God-realization, transformation, radical or otherwise, or even enlightenment, there is nothing there to be realized, nothing there to be found there. The very demand to be free from anything, even from the uh, physical needs of the body, just disappeared. And I was left with nothing. And whatever comes out of me depends upon what you draw out of me. So I have actually and factually nothing to, to communicate because there is no communication possible. The answers that those people, the wise men, have given you are not really the answers. And so if they were the answers, there wouldn't be any question there. The fact that you keep asking this question all the time means that they are not the answers. Supposing I give you an answer, hmm? Hmm? you will repeat this.
Nature has no use for your culture, no use for our ideas, no use for your religious thinking, no use for gods. The nature wants your body to recycle. I'm sorry. I, I, say cannot, that. I cannot agree completely. You cannot I agree because it's frightening that, you see, is that all after 80 years of my life, discussing that. these very profound questions for 61 years, the usefulness of this body is only for nature, which is interested in recycling this body. There must be something more than that. Come on, Mr. Atalani. Uh, just go out. Take care. Walk. <laughs> Do something more significant. To discuss about those things is for me very interesting. I had hope that I can realize before my death uh, something real of that, but they were only words, words and words. Also now, I am this convention. <laughs>